let's go back to Serafina a little bit. And uh, I have to say, you know, uh, uh, there's sometimes that kind of like this little boredom that can uh, come into the thoughts of an oncologist. And uh, sometimes we hear, oh, it's not effective or, or, or it has side effects. Uh, Richard, tell us the truth. So, like, uh, what does Serafina do? What can it benefit the patients? How difficult or how easy it to handle? You know, I, I think we'll probably, this will come up repeatedly uh, yeah. because the data from the SHARP study that initially got the drug approved has stood the test of time. Correct. All these phase three studies have, have been equivalent or inferior to serafinib. And we've also seen in other studies that there's more to it than this three month survival. There are some groups that are living 14 months or longer. Uh, to, to talk in the practical sense, given uh, I, I'm from a center where I've, I've had a lot of experience with the compound. The drug is manageable. You know, 400 milligrams twice a day is the FDA approved dose. Everybody will say that no one can tolerate that. That's not necessarily true. There are patients who can tolerate it. Do we all start our patients at 400 twice a day the day we see them? Uh, no, I think there has been data as well as clinical experience that says starting 200 milligrams twice a day and then dose titrating quickly within two to three weeks uh, helps patients stay on therapy and also teases out the patients who might have a super hypersensitivity, get bad hand foot syndrome. I think the, uh, the most common toxicities we see are, are unique across the globe. You know, GI toxicity, whether that's just anorexia or diarrhea, uh, the dermatologic toxicity, the hand foot skin syndrome and, and fatigue. Uh, hand foot skin syndrome can be managed uh, with education about trying to avoid pressure on, on the hands and feet as well as using urea-based creams. There was a, a, a phase three study published in JCO just I think in this past year that was presented at ASCO in the past that showed that prophylactic use of these agents, these urea-based creams actually helps patients stay on drug and decreases the risk of hand foot skin reaction. And then diarrhea, all of us are comfortable in medical oncology managing that in the context of of arenatecan, capecitabine, other chemotherapy agents. And this drug, it's not much different. Emodium, being in contact with patients, I think is critical. Uh, this isn't, just because it's an oral drug doesn't mean you give it to them and you see them three months later. Uh, they need to come back. Typically, I'll see them within 10 to 14 days of starting and probably every two weeks for the past first, you know, two and a uh, month and a half, two months. And then patients can go monthly uh, once they're on a stable dose and having stable toxicities. Fair enough. This is really very important information because number one, let's look at the population. As we just heard, transplant, surgery, local therapy, ultimately they don't serve except a certain number in the population with HCC. And unfortunately, a lot of those patients ultimately will actually recur with some metastatic disease and thus the very critical need always for having a systemic therapy that will be of uh, uh, help for patients with metastatic disease. And that's why sorafenib uh, come to play uh, since 2007 and have helped no doubt many people. Uh, the challenge always comes and no question I agree with Richard. Actually, jokingly, we talk about the, uh, uh, you know, the comparative arm on those studies that came out as sharp two, sharp three, sharp four, because literally just reproduce always that 10.7 month or equivalent or close to. Um, uh, yes, there has been a lot of data questioning the dosing and the tolerance, but I would probably agree 400 gram twice a day will be the appropriate dose to start with. And of course, uh, uh, adjusted as deemed necessary, but don't give up because it seems that the leeway that you can have in regard to the biologic activity and what you can do in that regard is pretty, uh, pr pr pretty wide and definitely you have a lot of uh, maneuvering that you can apply to the patients. Uh, important though, and this is again, I would like to stress that as Richard mentioned, uh, this is not a pill that you just hand on to the patient and just call me in a month or check you in two months. This is something that you have to follow very closely. I'll give you just an example where we pretty much used at uh, Sloan Catering and the other centers are doing the same some form of uh, uh, telemedicine, if you want to call it that way, uh, where we pretty much, uh, after starting sorafenib in a few days, uh, we uh, might very well call the patient uh, and understand what kind of symptoms they might have. And if there's any question about uh, uh, any form of hand foot syndrome, which is a drug limiting toxicity of the drug, we'll ask to have some pictures sent to us uh, through our portal, which is a uh, secure system, which all hospitals have nowadays. We look at the pictures and decide accordingly how to adjust the drug. And you will be amazed how much you 
you can really reduce on the chance of having what we call a grade three where there's peeling of the skin, which could be very hurtful, very painful, simply by simple uh, close follow-up with the patient. So very, very important to have that close follow-up as Richard said as well. Now with this said,